So, you guys are starting a new unit, right? You, no, nobody's seen this yet? No. Okay. So, electrical principles and technologies. So, this unit's going to be about electricity, right? And the different kinds of electricity. First unit, or the first topic, sorry, is going to be about electric charges. That's what we're doing today. Um, and then you're going to do electricity within a circuit. So, that you're going to make like a little circuit, you know, like with light bulbs and everything. Um, resistance. <laughs> the uh, the energy connection. You, you talk about power, like how we actually end up getting power to your house, right? Um, generators and motors, how those work, and then electricity in the house. So just a bit more about like the actual like wiring in your house, and then electricity in the environment. So how electricity is produced, and maybe some environmental impacts that happen from that. All right. So topic one: electric charges. So we are going to distinguish between static and current electricity. And identify applications of each. Have you guys ever heard of like static electricity or like you know maybe you know what that means? Yeah, Johnny. When you're in the blanket and you get shocked. Right. Have you guys ever like especially certain blankets? You'd be laying in bed, and if it, if it's actually dark, you can actually see like little little static happening in your bed. I don't know if you have the right blanket. It's yeah. Really, yeah. If, it, if it's dark, and you get the, the right kind of a blanket. It'll, it, it's like little lightning bolts all happening through your through your blanket, right? Oh, it's weird. It. Yeah. Or you can do the old carpet flip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Have, have you got? What about like any other? Where, where else have you seen static like this? Right? When I'm like in gym and I take off my titty and then I touch the doorknob, you get a little shock. You get a little shock, right? Yeah. Yeah, for a balloon. A balloon, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, so what is static electricity though, right? So So yeah, you've probably heard static electricity. It's often used by rubbing two objects together, causing your hair to stand up or produce small shock, but what is static electricity? So we need to kind of like look at what, what is it though? Like it's weird, you guys know what happens, but like, is it kind of magic? Like it's just, it's weird. Like, right, you can rub your, your feet on your socks on the floor and then touch something and it like sends a spark. Like what's, what is that spark? What's happening there? Yeah, Kate? Uh, the electricity is being transferred from whatever the surface you're making contact with to you, and then when you touch the surface that conduct, Conducted, so for example, like someone else with a doorknob, it sends a shock to you. Yeah, so yeah, that, that's perfect. So let's let's go a little bit deeper though. Like, what what do we actually mean by electricity? What is electricity? Yeah, Doug. It is a form of energy. There is energy there, but like, what is it? It's it's like it hurts if you get enough of it, right? Like, there's some there's something there, but what is it? Yeah. It's the um, transfer of electrons. Right, right, perfect. It is, it is the transfer of electrons. So let's let's talk about what that means. You guys have done chemistry, right? Yeah, we just finished that. You guys done chemistry? Okay. So let's go back to chemistry. Let's let's draw the simplest version of an atom, right? So in in chemistry, you have a proton. You guys remember that? And then what goes around the outside of a proton? An electron, right? So if this is hydrogen, right? Hydrogen is the simplest. So I'm, I'm just doing the simplest one. Yeah, I'm doing just the simplest one just so that um, just so that you can see like in the most simple form. Um, so one proton for hydrogen, one electron. So do you guys remember what the charge on a proton was? Is it positive or negative? Positive. Positive, right? So a proton is positive. So positively charged proton. What about the electron? What, yeah, it's negative, right? So we got positive proton, negative electron, right? So this is kind of like where we get electricity from, right? So electricity is really just this guy. It's it's your electron being stripped away from the proton. So let's say you've got a bunch of these, right? You've got like, you know, hydrogen's a bad example because hydrogen wouldn't work this way. But let's say you got a bunch of atoms, right? Where you've got a positive center and, you know, electrons orbiting it. So you've got like an electron there. It's negative. 
So what I mean by by electricity is really these electrons zipping down the wire, right? It's the electrons that are actually just flying down like like an actual wire. Or like when we're talking about static electricity, it's these electrons zipping through the air, right? Like when you shock someone, you're actually sending electrons towards them. Or, which we'll talk about in a bit, you're either sending electrons towards them, or they're sending electrons towards you. But either way, either way, it's, it's the movement of electrons. That's like a huge part of this unit, that there's going to be like questions on the test and everything else say something like, you know, um, for electricity to work, uh, which one's moving, the protons or the electrons? You guys need to know it's the electrons that move, not the protons that move. Electrons are the ones that move, which makes sense, right? If you got your atom, right? Like the electron is the one orbiting around. Electrons move, right? They, they go around things. They, they, they can move freely, but the protons are kind of like stuck in place. Okay? Fortnite gamers. <laughs> Alright. Um, so yeah, read through here, guys. So static electricity results build up electrons. We'll talk about this. So more more accurately referred to as unbalanced charges. Yeah. This will make more sense when we uh, get into it. So here's another one. Again, if we're talking about like your guys' exam or what you need to know, really important is the law of charges. Right? Here's your law of charges. Um, need to know them. So why does your hair stand on end after gaining a charge? Um, how can a charge in a balloon have, pow have the power to bend water? Each of these phenomena can be explained with a lot of charges. So the law of charges, one, unlike charges attract, two, like charges repel, and charged objects attract uncharged objects. So this one's not, not that hard to, to comprehend, I think. The way I always tell students to remember is by like magnets, right? So do you guys know if you have a north pole of a magnet, um, what does that attract? The south or the north pole? South. south. That's south, right? Opposites of a magnet attract, right? And if you have a north and a north magnet, they repel, right? Well, charges are very similar, right? If you got different charges, all right, if you got like a, a positive and a negative, they are going to attract. If you've got the same charges, right, two positives, they're going to repel. If you've got two negatives, they're going to repel. And then this one down here, where if you've got something that's not charged, it will attract the positive, and it would also attract the negative. That one's a little bit weirder, and I'll, I'll show you why that's the case here in a minute. But um, but yeah, you also just have to remember that one. Okay? So, let's, I'm just going to show you these little gizmo things I got. Oh, they went away. What was it, Max? Okay, so you guys have seen the like a balloon stick to things before. Have you guys ever witnessed that? You can you can rub a balloon in your head and stick to a wall, or rub a balloon in your head and like you, you get that magical like force happening now that like it's just weird. That like why does that attract it's like magic? Um, all right, so let's just kind of see what's happening here, right? So right now, if I look at if I look at like the sweater, right? Why are there like a positive and a negative on like you know right there? Because yeah. your sweater right now is balanced charges. Right. And, and if you think about it like with an atom, right? Like look at how they come in pairs like this. Think about this as being like an atom. So you've got the positive center, you've got the nucleus, right? That's the proton. And you've got the electron orbiting around the outside, right? So in any atom, you've got a positive thing and a negative thing, right? And together, that positive proton and negative electron balance out to, to, be, to be balanced. No charge, right? But now... What happens if I grab this balloon and I start rubbing it on the sweater? What happens is that certain materials are good at stealing electrons from the sweater. Right? I stole all of those electrons. Right? And now what's going to happen if I bring it over here? What do you guys think if I let this thing go? What what would happen? It, it might uh, connect to the wall because the opposite charge. Uh, here, let's pretend the wall's not there. Let, let's just say between the sweater and the balloon. What's that? I don't want to let it go now, or else we'll see what happens. It's gonna, it's gonna go to the sweater. How? Why do you think it'll like be attracted to the sweater? Yeah, done. Yeah. 
yeah, that's perfect. It wants to even itself out, right? It want, those electrons want to be home. They want to be back with these, with these uh, positive, with their protons, right? So I let it go. It's going to be attracted, and this is that law of attraction, right? These positive things are attracted to these negative things, right? So that's why it's going to be attracted that way, right? That makes sense. Okay, so now let's see if I got this negatively charged balloon, right? There's just more electrons on it than there are protons. Then what happens if I bring it over to the wall? You guys probably know what will happen, but what do you think? What do you think will happen? It's attracting my life. If you guys have ever done this, if you rub a balloon on your head, it actually it kind of depends on like whether it's dry or not too, but if you rub a balloon on your head and it sticks it to a wall, it, it'll stick to the wall, right? It'll actually stay there. And, and what, which of my, so it does stick, right? Which of my, um, if I go back to my law of charges here, which of these three is this an example of when it's sticking to the wall? Okay. Uh, like charges repel? Like charges repel? I mean, it does happen there, but I'm like sure it's all It's a little bit of both. Yeah, actually, it is a little bit of both. Um, it's, it's really three, right? Because if I go back here, right, this is a charge. The balloon is a charged object, right? It's, it's negatively charged. And the wall is neutral. It still has it still has positive and negative in it, right? It's neutral. So they're attracting. So that's that's three. But you're right. The reason why it attracts is actually from the other one, right? Because what happens here, this balloon goes up toward the wall, right? And it pushed all of the electrons away. Why did why did the why did the balloon push the electrons away in the wall? Okay. Because the uh, amount of electrons in the balloon repel the electrons in the wall. Right, right. So now, the, yeah, the electrons in the balloon repel the electrons in the wall, right, and push them away. And now that those electrons are over there, farther to the right, and these protons that are that are right here on the balloon are close to these protons now, the overall effect is that it's going to be attracted. To tell you the truth, guys, this idea of what's actually happening here and explaining that phenomenon that's more of a physics 20 concept. Your guys' big thing to know is that that charged objects like this balloon are attracted to neutral objects like the like the wall. But that's why that there's there's more going on there. Yeah. Does that that make sense? Yeah. Oh. Now, now it's recording. Okay. So so the other thing that, that's kind of cool, maybe you guys can, when you're down the science lab, you can do this one. If you get a balloon, and again, you rub it on your head, um, what will happen, like, like right here, right, like we saw like in that demo, there's going to be more electrons on the balloon, right? Like on, especially on that surface right there, because it stole those electrons from, from your hair, right? Okay. Um, what will happen is that, you guys learned about this, right? What molecule is this? Or a water molecule. Water, like a water molecule, right? And um, what will happen is that it's, it's dipolar. So one side of this thing, right, the hydrogen molecules on this thing, will, have, will be more positively charged than the, the oxygen will be more negatively charged. Sorry, other way around. Negative and then positive. I don't know why it was looking like that. Brown, but anyway, yeah. Just to be clear, oh. Okay. 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 So yeah. So what's happening here is that it's really just that charge thing again. So you've got the charge that's actually happening on the water molecule. I bet you Ms. Turner's going to be able to explain that better because she's a chemistry person. But uh, what's happening there is that the like. The charge that's actually on this molecule is interacting with a charge on the balloon, and it'll actually bend the water. Yeah. So hopefully, yeah, you guys will be able to maybe see that one. Um, okay. All right. So again, like you kind of saw this with that balloon thing, right? So making sense of charges. Um, so recall that substances are composed of atoms, right? This is what we talked about already. So if I look down here, um, this is a neutral or uncharged object. How do I know that that's a neutral or uncharged object right there? Because it's the same amount of positive charge as negative Yeah, they've all balanced out, right? That's a, if I count them up, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight positives, and there's going to be eight negatives, so it's balanced, right? 
this one, what what would the, the overall charge on this one be? Come on, you guys know this one. Overall, negative or positive? Positive. Positive, positive right? So positive. There's more positive. <laughs> okay, here, so here's a big question. Look at, like, with that balloon thing. If I'm looking at this, does this thing have more or less electrons? Right. This thing has lost electrons. It has an overall, like right at the proton stage, the electrons left. Right? It's not here's the big thing. It it didn't gain protons, right? It didn't gain positive things. It lost negative things. It lost the electrons. Okay. This one, I've got a uh, like a negative object. So did this thing gain electrons or did it lose protons? If it's negatively charged? The protons don't move, right? They gain electrons. Yeah, that's how, that's how things become negative. They gain electrons. Yeah. All right. So now, so that was static electricity. Uh, one last thing. I better show you the John voltage thing. John voltage? <laughs> yeah. What's the point of the tape? Um, oh. What's my favorite movie? So, so what's happening here? This is a this is John Travolta. So it's it's called it's called John Travolta. Okay, I see guys. Everybody. All right. So what's going to happen here is <laughs> we got a carpet, right? And he's going to rub his leg on the carpet. And you can see it's stealing the electrons from the carpet, right? So, is he negatively or positively charged right now? He's negatively charged, right? He's gained an excess of electrons. So, so right now, those electrons don't like each other, do they? Right? They want they repel. They don't. They want to be as far away from each other as they can. There's too many electrons, so they want they want a way out. So this is what happens when you like scooch across the floor with your feet on the carpet, right? And then you and then you walk over and you touch somebody. What happens? Well, those electrons want a way out, <laughs> and they would jump across to even out, out, right? Out. Yeah, that's Did that's that's all that thing does. All right, so that was so that was static electricity, right? So you, that that's just the movement of electrons over like a, a brief second, right? It's just going really quick. Now what we're going to talk about is um, actual like electric current, right? So conductors and insulators. So what's happening here is that you've got electrons that are able to move freely through some object. Um, so this could still be, I guess, with static electricity as well. But more typically, we use wiring for like house wiring stuff, right? So what do you think? Would you say copper? Is a good insulator or a bad insulator? Or a bad, bad, good conductor or a bad conductor? Very good conductor. Yeah, you guys talked about this too, didn't you, in, in chemistry, right? He's the king of conduction. What type of uh, matter or what type of, of, of uh, what things in the periodic table were good at conducting electricity? Metal. Not metal. Metals, right? So it's the same thing. We're talking about conductors here. Um, what type of things well, do you think would be good insulators? Rubber. Yeah, rubber is a good insulator, yeah. So, but on the periodic table, which of the things on the periodic table would probably be good insulators? Yeah. For non-metal, to make some metal ones? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, guys, I need you to stop. Just have a conversation. Thanks. Okay. Okay, so pretty much what it is, guys, is certain metals. Here, I'll even, I'll just draw it here. So certain materials, even with the picture that we still have up here, Certain materials just allow for these electrons to jump. Let's say, like, what will happen is, like, this electron that's right here, right? You guys are looking? Yeah. This electron right here will be able to jump from, like, one atom to the next atom to the next atom. And that would be a good conductor, right? It can jump from one freely to the other. But what certain materials have is they just don't allow for that very well. And it gets kind of complicated, like, why some do and why some don't. But for the most part, it's just that... They're just not able to move very, very easily from one to the other. There's a, like the chain doesn't just get broken, and, and the electrons kind of stop moving. Make sense? Okay. All right, superconductors. Okay, superconductors are super cool. 
So. Uh, oh, that, that was actually. Uh, I didn't know. Yeah. I can also read one Okay, so. <laughs> so, a so what a superconductor is, is it's a material that um, conducts electricity like perfectly. Which I know probably doesn't sound that, that crazy for you guys, but like everything, like a wire and everything else that we know of, has what's called resistance. But if you get a superconductor, there's actually absolutely no resistance. It's, it's, it's literally so zero nice. resistance. So it's like that electron has nothing in its way. It can just go as fast as it wants. Brooklyn's going away. So it can just go as fast as it wants with no energy loss. Which means if we had superconductor wires, right, that ran from like our house or from like our uh, power plant to our house, there would be no energy loss. It would just be like perfect amount. All of that energy would run straight to your house. It would be absolutely perfect. We would also be able to like, it gets confusing again, but we'd be able to make like these crazy magnets. We'd be able to make like absolutely like huge magnets. And one, well, and, and a really cool application of this. If you, you guys know like hoverboards, like oh, maybe on uh, Back to the Future or something, you've seen this. Hoverboards would be possible then. You could actually just have like a hop, like with you can make a really really like crazy magnetic field where you could be on a hoverboard on the ground and you could just float. It would it, be crazy. Yeah. Oh, uh, a company actually did that. They have, but what they have to do is actually use a lot of energy, yeah. Yeah, and they, they lose a lot of energy. They made an entire skate park which made it out of the wood. Uh, yeah. Like, so like it would just like um, the board would just come off of it, and like you could only be a certain amount of weight, or the board would just pull. Yeah. Like, yeah, right. But it worked pretty good. They had the guy jumping over a car on it. So oh yeah, really. So so with that, what they do is they make like it's called an electromagnet. You guys will learn more about that in the scene too. Um, but that requires a lot of energy to make those. These superconductors, what they would do is if you can if you can drop the temperature of some substance, certain substances, right, then you wouldn't need any energy. Things could just float on top of other things without any sort of need for like a whole bunch of energy to go into it. There's scientists right now trying to find what's called room temperature superconductors. It's like a search for that because it would solve like all kinds of energy problems. It would it would be huge. Like our energy like needs would just totally go out the window. Like we Cold right now. It, when I say cold, though, some of these things need to be, need to be like uh, brought down to a temperature of like minus 140. Yeah. All right. Okay. Neutralizing unbalanced charges. Okay. So, have you guys ever heard of something called like a grounding wire? It, like your parents maybe talk about that, like you need to make sure you're grounded, or or maybe you think about that a little bit different because you've been grounded for not doing your work. Nope. That's probably. Yeah. <laughs> See that that was I missed you that one. Yeah. Uh, ground wire is like a way for excess electricity to be discharged into the ground, which it, so when like when you have a plug, the third wire at the bottom is a ground wire. Yeah, yeah, that's really exactly what it is, and that John Travolta thing that we were doing, right? The ground, the ground wire there would just be like a doorknob. What it's doing is it's just a path for all those electricities to literally, and it's called grounding because it's it's a way for them to literally go into the ground, right? The earth is massive, right? So what can happen is if I build up too many electrons on me or on a wire or in a house or something, the ground will take care of it, right? If I just give it away down to the ground, it, those electrons just go into the earth, and that's fine. Who cares if it goes down to the earth? It's like a safe way for those electrons to leave. So if we get like some buildup because something wasn't wired very well or whatever in a house, right? Where there's like all these electrons building up on one of your light switches or one of your lights or somewhere in your house, right? That's dangerous because all of a sudden they build up, build up, build up. And then you walk up to it and you get too close. Who's the ground in that case? I'm the ground, right? So if I walk up and touch this thing, the, what, the electricity is gonna go through me down to the ground, right? So what we do is we, we make a ground wire that just is not me, right? It'll let the electrons go down to the ground in a safe way. So there's other places they do this. They build ground wires also on like skyscrapers. Why would you put a ground wire on a skyscraper? Yeah? Because like it's so high up, so it's like 
Lightning, yeah. It's, it's lightning, right? Because big skyscrapers get hit by lightning quite a lot. I don't want that lightning bolt to hit the building and then travel through all the plumbing and all the wires and everything else and then jump through me at some point, right? So what they do is they, they make these absolutely massive ground wires where when a lightning bolt hits the top of the building, it will just safely travel down into the ground and nobody gets hurt, right? So that's really what a ground wire is. It's literally just a path for the electricity to go to the ground. So you wouldn't even know that about that. Well, you, you can't see it. Like, uh, if, if they do these time-lapse videos of, like, buildings getting hit by lightning, and they get hit by lightning quite a lot, actually. Like, if you're looking you like, Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll show some, some of those, yeah. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Okay, so, yeah. Stack electricity in nature, lightning bolt, right? So, what happens there is we make this, like, really simple idea of like you know these like there's clouds here i'll show you kind of the picture i always get shown which is kind of silly but um they'll always show clouds up in the sky right rubbing into each other and then you know they were positively and negatively charged so you've got you know positive negative something like that right but then they rub into each other, and this cloud, let's say, will gain more electrons, and this one will lose them, right? So what's going to happen here? You've got this buildup of electrons in the cloud. What, what might happen there? You've got too many electrons all bundled up in that cloud. Yeah, just like the John voltage thing, right? Those electrons want a way out. There's too many electrons in this cloud. So then they go, ah, get out of here, and then they go down to the ground and... and uh, that's what a lightning bolt is, right? Which is crazy, like because they're they're so powerful. There's so many electrons coming out of that cloud. That's how we explain it, but really that's a bit too simplistic. It's not that you've got these like fuzzy little clouds that are you know rubbing into each other, and it's not like that's really what's happening. It's it's something scientists actually study still. They're trying to figure out why is it that like you know you get these charges in certain areas and not in others, but it can roughly be explained that way. So so that's what's happening with the with thunder. So thunder is just the sound it makes. So if you get a lightning bolt that hits the ground, right? If actually to tell you the truth, what thunder is, it's kinda neat. So you get you get you get this electricity um, running through the ground. Uh, what happens there is that you've got the electrons on either side of this thing, right? So You've got atoms like over here, right? So you've got an atom, an atom, an atom all around where that lightning bolt came down. That lightning bolt came down, and what what it, 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 it ionizes the air around it. It's called. So the what what I mean by ionize is it steals all the electrons in, right? So the electrons all come in, in there, and it it creates a vacuum. I'm kind of throwing a lot of terms at you guys at this one right now, but. <laughs> Is it? No, yeah. 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 yeah it will work, but you guys get a hundred, even if you get it wrong, you redo it. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, what happens is that these things get ionized, and it, it creates a vacuum um, where this lightning bolt came down. You guys know what a vacuum is? It just means there's like no air particles in there at all, right? Space. It's like space is a vacuum, right? It's like you created a little pocket of like outer space, right where the lightning bolt is. And then all the air, like there's like all this pressure pushing in from each side. And what happens is it just goes like whoop. It just it just comes in and all the air smashes into all the other air. And and that's pretty much what it is. It just created a vacuum and all the air came crashing in around it. It makes like an incredibly loud noise. And that's why it comes out to well, well, it's yeah, and the reason why if you're standing over here, right, if you're standing over there, and you see the lightning before you hear the lightning, why would you see it before you hear it? Johnny, with his hand up. Oh, that was for that was, that was, that was Light travels faster than sound. Yeah, light travels faster than sound, right? Light travels to your eyes, right? Right to your eyes at at. 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared, which is 3 and then 1, 2, 3 
meters every second. That's how fast it moves. It's incredibly fast. That's how fast light moves. Sound moves at about um, 320 meters per second, which is still really fast, but not near as fast as light, right? So you pretty much see it right when it happens, but the sound takes a while to actually get to your ear, to your ear. Like well, you're, the thing is, when you're when you're watching a movie, it's like you're right there. Yeah, so that, so they're practically at the same time because it just you you were like only like a meter away or two meters away, right? So you know they were for all intents and purposes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's pretty much. Okay. And that's that.